Hello everyone, and thank you for checking out my video here on how to start a Minecraft server. Um, I'm going to do this in two parts, guys. So what I'm going to do, this video here, I'm going to discuss how to get a basic Minecraft server up and running, and what you need to know, and some other little useful tools that can help you out. Um, there's a couple sites I want to give you as well. One is for helping you forward the proper ports so that people can connect. And the other site is actually for a program called Notepad++. This is the, uh, it's like the Notepad program in Windows, and I'm, I'll get to all this soon. But um, it's really good when you're editing files for Minecraft. So first things first, what we got to do to get a Minecraft server going, um, you want to create a folder. Now I got this one called Basic Minecraft, as you can see. There's nothing in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually put stuff in here. So to start off, you need to go to mojang.com. Actually, not that. Sorry, Minecraft. Wait, sorry. You close all this. You don't need to see all this. Okay. Let's see. Minecraft. Net. We'll just go here. Minecraft.net. So on their main page, we go to download over on the right. And what you want to do. You can get the server.exe if you want. I I don't want to do that. Uh, so I'm going to teach you how to use the server.jar file. So what we do is we're just going to download this. Keep. Now I'm going to go to show in folder on Chrome here. And I want to right click on this and I cut. So I'll close that folder now and I'm going to paste it in my server folder. Now there's two ways to start this. You can just double click on the file and run it, which I'm going to do first, and which you should do first as well. And what this is doing is creating all the files, it's creating property files, and it's creating the world for the first time. We're going to let this run, and then we're going to delete the world. So once this is done, as you can see in here, there's a bunch of files. And we're going to edit these files to your own liking. Now keep in mind, this is a basic vanilla Minecraft server. It's like playing single player, but it's just you can have multiple players on. So that's done. Now I'm going to just stop this. So you always stop it by typing stop. This here will save your world. As you can see, saving chunks, and it's done. So of these files that created here, we have a file called whitelist. This is server.properties, but I uh, I made it open in Notepad. That's why I don't see the dot .properties. But this is the main file we want to check out. So here we can set properties like allow the nether, the name of the world, allow flight, enable query, port, etc. Um, what you want to do is for server IP, leave that one blank. A lot of people might be confused with this one, like what does this mean? I always leave it blank if I'm making a server. Uh, it, it, to be quite honest, I don't know exactly what it does, but it should be left blank. Whitelist equals false. You want to make that true if you want to make your server protected. You don't want just anyone connecting to you. Um, if you don't care, it doesn't matter. You can leave it false. Now here you can control if animals respond or if monsters respond. Right here, spawn monsters and you get spawn animals. That's always good to be able to have control over if you just want to uh, create a server or whatever. PvP equals true or false. Difficulty um, that's one up to four, I believe, maybe even up to three. Game mode. This is for creative mode or survival mode. So right now, zero equals creative mode. Or sorry, zero equals survival mode. If you put that to one, then your server is a creative mode server where you can just create whatever you want. Max players. That's fairly obvious. View distance. Now this here is how many chunks will the server send to a client. The higher this number is, the more lag there will be. The lower it is, the longer it's going to take for someone to see into the distance. Uh, I recommend just leaving this at 10. Um, I wouldn't change this very much. Just 4 or 4 if you have any issues with, with uh, chunk visibility, things like that. Message of the day, this is whatever you want. You can just put in a line of text here and people will see that. So I'm just going to turn PvP off. So false. And let's see, I'm going to turn the whitelist on. I don't want the white, or I don't want just anyone connecting. So true. Level seed. This here, if you see any seeds on the internet, like on Minecraft forums, any seeds you want to try, you can put it in here and your world will be created with that seed. That's always good to have. 
server port, I'll leave that at the default. This here, 25565, this is the port that we're going to have to make open on your computer or your router if you're behind a router in order for people to connect. And I'm going to walk you through that in a minute. So I'm going to just leave this as is. I'm not going to change anything else besides that. And I'm going to close this file and save. Now, I enabled whitelist, so I have to open this up. Now, this is a very simple file. You just put in the name of the user. So my username is mRoads. And if you want to put another one in, you hit that. And you can type in another name. And just keep on typing whatever you want. So I'm just going to put my own on. Save. Now that means I'm on the whitelist, I can connect. Ops, this is another important file. You definitely want to put your username in here. This allows you to use server commands within the game. So and you don't want to give this to everybody, you want to give this to whoever you trust. Band IPs, band players, well that's just going to be a list of players and a list of IPs of people who are banned from your server. And of course, world, this is your world data. So. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. You can, like I said before, you can start that file up by double clicking the server file or you can make what's called a batch file and this batch file can be like a script to start a server and you can put in certain options and this way you don't have to have that user interface up. So I'm just going to type this in and I'll explain it in a moment. Actually on the Minecraft site it tells you right here Java and these numbers here. I'm just going to copy and paste this and then I'll explain it. Okay, you want to get rid of that last period. You don't want a period there. So, what this is, it's Java because Java is what runs your server. The XMX is the maximum amount of RAM that you want to allocate for your server, XMS is the lower amount. So, this uses just a gig of RAM. Jar means you want to run a jar file, and Minecraft underscore server dot jar is of course the file. And then after this, you gotta type in pause, p a u s e, because um, otherwise, if you don't, this batch file will just end and shut the server right off. So, echo off. That just means don't repeat these lines. Jot in this, then it will command or execute this line, which runs your server, and then it will pause. It will wait for this line here. When this here is done then it will close. Actually no, sorry, when that line's done then it will say press any key to continue and I'll show you that in a moment. Now this is an important step here. You want to go save and when you do this you want to change text documents to all files and let me see here, I gotta go to my desktop I gotta go to basic minecraft and here I'm just gonna call it start.bat all right, let's close this, minimize that, and let's double click start. And here we go. Now this is exactly what we just saw, except it's in a console window, and it show it doesn't show the user interface. So it's just a quick, easy way, and then you can really customize it yourself. So this is done, it's up and running. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to just load up my Minecraft and get it and see if I can log into it. So just give me a moment here and I'll get my Minecraft going. Alright folks, so here we are, multiplayer, and that's another one, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a server, I'm going to call it, just, well I'll just leave it like that, now the address is, best way for you to connect to your own is just type local host, and done, so as you can see it's visible, let me connect, and you guys have all played Minecraft before, so I'm not going to really do much here, but as you can see, it's running. It's uh, I'm connected to my own server now. I made myself an op, which means I should be able to set the time. So let's slash time set. And let's go 2400. Time set to the 2400. So I don't even know what this does. I don't know what times or what, but it obviously worked. Time set zero. There we go. You can see the sun went down to its original starting position. So that will be the earliest point of the day. So, I was able to get on my server, whitelist worked, the op file worked. Now I'm going to get out and I'm going to explain port forwarding to you after this. It's very important to get this right or otherwise people may not be able to connect to you.
Okay, so what I'm looking at now, what you guys are looking at now, this is my router. I have a D-Link router, and this is my port forwarding rules. So now for you guys, it might be different, and I'm going to give you a link that's going to show you pictures of what your router is, and I'll show you that in a second. But what I want to show you here is I got Minecraft, and it's checked. The IP address is my internal IP, my computer's IP address. And to get that, you want to go to CMD, which is your command, command prompt like this here, and you type in IP config, and you hit enter. And then you're going to see a bunch of stuff like this come up. Really depends on what you have installed. But what you're looking at, what we're looking for is this 192.168.0.102. That's my computer's address. This is the one you want to put in here for the server. You want to forward the Minecraft port to your local computer. So, as you can see, I have that here, but I have actually uh, two computers, and this is the one I got set up now. But regardless, it's the same. Over here, start and end. This is the port number, 25565. It's only one port for Minecraft. That's all you need to do, and you need to set this up and then save it. And then people can connect to you by your external IP address, like what you're using on the internet. To get that, you can go to whatismyip.com and you see it right there. Now, for the sake of the video, and I don't want to get hacked or anything, I'm going to blur this out. However, uh, this is your IP address right here. So, that's that. Now, the site I want to show you, in case you're not sure how to set up port forwarding, is a site called portforward.com. This is a really great site. If you scroll down on this site, it's got links to any router. I mean, it might not have your router, it might not have every single router, but you can go on here, you can see that there's tons and tons of them. Like, this is my one right here. Now, you saw what it looks like. So, let's just compare. Now, you might be confused here, it's trying to tell you to buy something. This is just their way of getting money. Up in the top right corner, you can click here to skip. And then it brings us to this. Now this is excellent because this is a list of games. Uh, so if this is good for you using for anything, like any kind of game you want to run a server for. But we're going to quickly scroll down because Minecraft is in this list. Minecraft server. Click on that. And then it tells me how to log in. It tells me like this looks just like what I saw. Yep, this is exactly it. And it tells you what to put in here. So this is a very excellent website for people who aren't sure what to do or how to do it. You can go here and do that. So that's basically what it takes to get a Minecraft server up and running. That's a basic Minecraft server. You need to forward the port from your router. You need set to set up your properties files and you're ah, good to go. See. Now my next video I'm going to show you how to run a bucket server. Your router, that's a server. server where you can add mods, you can add extra things. Um, you can really, really have a good time with that one. You can put in really extra, really nice extra features. So that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you guys. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And uh, myself or anyone in the community, you guys are all free to answer any questions you see on my uh, forums. I can't get to them all. But um, let me know if this doesn't help you or if something's not working. I'll try my best to help you out. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for my bucket video.